Hi, my name is Vera Schock and I run the voluntary not-for-profit organisation called the Brotigan Book Club. Um, we've been invited to bring some events and performances to the inaugural Dinova Literature Festival, which runs June the 29th to July the 1st this year, and that's going to be taking place in West Wales. I'm trying to raise some money. Sorry, I've got some notes here because I'm probably going to forget some things. Anyway, I'm trying to raise £2,000 in order to pay for Ianthi Brotigan's flight from San Francisco to London. Now, we had some really generous donations of air miles towards this journey, but unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, we've been able to cash in these air miles and so I've um, had to pay for a flight myself since we'd already extended our invitation to her and also because she's been so wonderful and we really would love to share the event with her. So yes, this money would go towards her airfare and to get her safely and comfortably to Wales. And also um, to pay for a week's worth of rehearsal space. Again, um, at a discounted rate already from kind supporters who have space. And um, we also are trying to get a team of 15 performers and artists and writers to Wales. And um, whilst people are using their own cars, I would like to give them petrol money. So that's three cars driving from London to Wales. Also, the money would go towards um, <clears throat> providing some warm, safe accommodation for some wonderful performers who won't be able to camp because, uh, for example, we've got an opera singer and um, other classical musicians who, for the sake of their instruments and their voices, um, need to be not in a tent in the countryside. So, yes. Um, let me tell you a little bit more about what we're going to be doing at the festival. Um, it's the first festival ever in West Wales um, celebrating literature and uh, the Brotigan Book Club is going to do an event per day. So on the Friday we're doing, uh, we're going to be reading out Richard Brotigan's poem, Please Plant This Book, which um, really combines the idea of reading and with an optimistic future and really sort of the idea that creativity is the way forward and encouraging young people to read or anyone to read really opens up vast wonderful imaginative worlds and that's only a positive thing so we're recreating the event that um, Richard Brotigan himself did way back when and he where he distributed about two three thousand seed packets with little poems for free um, we're going to be doing this on a much smaller scale of about 200 seed packets which we'll be making and distributing for free as well we would also be planning a little Brotigan garden to celebrate Dinova's first ever literary festival um, I think it's a beautiful metaphor and a beautiful action to, to plant something that's going to, to live and to grow on the grounds of the festival that people can revisit and um, see as a tangible symbol of an optimistic future. Um, on the Saturday night, we will be presenting a fantastic sort of international journey inspired again by one of Richard Brodigan's books, by two of his books actually, the Tokyo Montana Express and Sombrero Fallout, which is um, a book that's going to be reissued by Canongate this year, incidentally. So we'll have, oh, we've got some wonderful time and talent donated by incredible performers. So we've got Griff Reese, Martin Carr and H. Hawkline writing some little songs um, inspired by Brodigan. And we've got, um, a few snippets of some opera written, inspired by Eric Patterson's new play, um, which was in turn inspired by Richard Brotigan. And Eric Patterson's this incredibly talented and successful writer in Los Angeles whose letters use his material. And we've got Kim Ashton who's donated his time and his talent towards writing some new opera. And we're going to be sharing some of our work with the audiences at Dinover. 
And on Sunday, we've got Ianthe Brotigan, Richard Brotigan's only daughter, who's um, really kindly agreed to come and meet everyone and to talk about her memoirs uh, and to talk about her current work. So we're very excited about that. Um, right, the Brotigan Book Club is run by a team of volunteers ranging from experts in, in sort of American literature to the an editor at the Times Literary Supplement to um, people, you know, uh, who don't have any expertise in books or the literary world. And we meet monthly in London and all our events, all our monthly events are free because we want them to remain accessible, inclusive, um, and, and friendly and welcoming. Um, I set it up because I believe in community. I believe in people coming together and meeting face to face, but we also have an online platform so that people all over the world who are Brotigan fans or who are inspired by Brotigan, even though they might not know very much about him, um, can meet online. We've had a fantastic response already. We launched officially in January and um, you know it's wonderful um, people all over the world communicating and more importantly we don't just meet to talk about his books we meet and we connect and we encourage and generate new work so when I say new work they could be in the shape of poems, songs, paintings, sketches, um, handicraft, cakes basically it's about encouraging people to express themselves and to yeah encouraging people to express themselves because all too often we might feel that um, what we have to say is not so valuable. So the Brotigan Book Club encourages people to come forward and to share in a really sort of relaxed way. And um, we've had some wonderful people, so like I said, you know, top level literary experts, but also um, Joe Bloggs of the Street. We had this incredible guy called Chris from the Bethel Green Working Men's Club who is, you know, a member of the Working Men's Club and he stumbled in one day and joined our group and it's nice to have a range of ages and people from different backgrounds coming together and really connecting, really having wonderful conversations. So, um... And ultimately, I believe that community and a supportive community um, has great value in sort of encouraging the generation of art. So I think the more people have contact with each other, real contact and real understanding or a real desire to understand, a desire to have their worlds opened up, and um, that means that there's a greater chance of people creating valuable art. Uh, right, so please, if you have a spare dime, every penny counts, every dollar counts, and I'd be really, really grateful. Thank you so much.